Hello Unreal Engine games developers. Uh, after I finished my last video on creating this heat haze effect, I added two extra features to it just to help it blend into the environment better. So I added this heat haze frequency. Uh, so this is the situation as it was at the end of the last video. Uh, the heat haze frequency allows you to change the tiling and therefore the undulation of the heat wave. So if I lower this from 1 to 0.1, you can see that it smooths out those heat haze waves in the background. Um, and the second thing I added in order to uh, blend it into the environment was a distance. So at the moment, let's turn up the intensity to 5. So you can see that it starts and the heat haze starts uh, almost directly in front of our character but uh, I wanted to have a distance parameter so that we could push it right back to the far dunes of the desert. So if I take this fade distance and make it 50,000, you can see that the effect doesn't now start until the more distant dunes. So I can reduce the effect now and you can see that it's a very subtle undulation just in the background and the dunes in the foreground aren't affected at all. So that's what I'll be showing you today. Let's get straight into it. Here's where we got to in the last video. It's uh, not too shabby, um, but I felt we could slightly improve upon the heat haze effect. So if you want to get to this stage, make sure you follow the video tutorial in the card above and the description below um, and just do the second part of that tutorial creating the planar refraction heat haze and then what we ended up with was a heat haze material that had these three parameters so we could adjust the speed of the uh, undulation of the refraction so we could make it more subtle in two dimensions and we could also increase or decrease the intensity so we can make it a more intense refraction or uh, less intense. So the two things I'm going to add today are a, um, a tiling of the texture in order to make the undulations less frequent and that is probably a more authentic effect. And the second thing is I'm going to provide a sense of distance to the heat haze as well using a similar trick with the depth fade node that I used in the dust cloud tutorial that I did earlier this month. So let's get out of play mode and let's get into the uh, material that we were creating. So this is what we created in uh, the last tutorial. Uh, we had a heat haze refraction material that uh, panned a noise texture. Uh, so we had these parameters for the speed of the panner and then we multiplied it by an intensity before plugging it into the refraction of the plane that we put in front of our character. So the first thing that I realized after doing this material was that this texture sample, well, first of all, the texture sample I, I mentioned in the video that you could use other texture samples. And I actually believe that using the water, a water uh, texture is probably better because it provides more a smoother transition between the edges rather than the noise where you can get more um, sort of cliff like edges between one and zero. So let's change that first of all, instead of my tiling noise here, if you search for water and you'll find this water T water N, a water normal texture, this will provide us a little bit of a smoother transition for the panner. So that was the first thing I changed. The second thing I realized was that we are not controlling the, other than modulating the UVs, we're not controlling the tiling of the this texture within the window pane that we put in. So it's stretched, it's, it's um, governed by the resolution of this texture. So what I wanted to do was put in a tiling type effect on this texture sample, 
which translates to the frequency of the waves in the final scene. And that's very easy to do. Let's take our texture coordinates. Uh, if you've ever created uh, landscape materials or anything, you're very familiar with tiling textures on there. It's a similar effect. So all we're going to do is we're going to drag out and do a multiply and uh, S on the keyboard for a scalar parameter, left click your mouse and we're going to call this heat, heat, haze, frequency. And we'll plug that in as the multiplier. And that will now come out as our coordinates for the panner. So it will, it defaulted to, actually let's do this, let's default it to a value of one, which is what we had by default by plugging that directly in. But now we can change the tiling of this texture and therefore the frequency of the waves in the final scene. So that's the first thing we're going to do here. Uh, the second thing we're going to add is this depth effect. And again, if you've followed the dust cloud video that I did uh, recently, then you'll realize there is this wonderful node called depth fade. And it effectively creates a mask that we can use to um, adjust our refraction in a sort of a pseudo uh, three dimensional effect, even though it's a two dimensional plane. So we don't, we don't want to change the opacity here. We just want to change, be able to change the fade distance. So same as before, let's create a parameter S for scalar parameter, left click. And I'm going to call this heat, heat, haze, distance. And I will plug that into the fade distance. And then all we need to do is our multiply the output of our existing nodes with the fade distance and plug that into the refraction. So this is a sort of a mask. Um, if we make it, uh, if we make the heat haze distance a value in the distance, it will create a, um, a white uh, mask or white value, which is a value of one in the foreground and a value of black, sorry, the other way around, value of black in the foreground, value of white in the background. And if we multiply our existing um, refraction, it will effectively mask it in the foreground, even though it's a, uh, a planar refraction. So very useful node. Uh, so let's save that. And you'll see immediately in my material instance on the right hand side there, I left it open. We have two new parameters, heat haze distance and heat haze frequency. So go back to your desert scene. Let's go into play mode and make it a little bit larger on screen. So at the moment we have the heat haze distance of zero and the heat haze frequency of one. So nothing's changed here, but let's go up to the uh, top of the dune so we can see some distant elements here. And we've got a quite a high intensity at the moment. Uh, so shift F1 will take me out of play mode. So I can go and change the parameters here. So let's first of all, let's, re re let's reduce the uh, intensity. Let's leave the intensity there actually so we can see the effect. So at the moment, the heat haze frequency is one. If I make that 0.1, you can immediately see, well, first of all, it's because we changed it to a water texture, it's more of a wave-like undulation now, which is, uh, which is a better effect. Secondly, the frequency of those waves are far reduced. And again, that's, um, that's better as well. If I, if I make this the other, go the other way, say two, can you see it's, um, the frequency is quite high. And actually sometimes, um, you know, have a look at footage of heat hazes. Sometimes they are like this. They are more, they are more frequent. It's almost like looking through stained glass. So depending on the effect you're going for, you may want to up the frequency, but we now have control over it. So um, I'll reduce it to a lower frequency. And now we have this distance as well. So let me just increase intensity so you can see this effect. Let's put it up to 
five. So you can see that where I have the plane in front of the character, the heat haze starts straight away. So it's it's starting what seems like about three meters in front of my character all the way to the background. What we can do now is we can change this heat haze distance. So let's put it 50,000 units. And can you see how it's now only in the far dunes? It's, it only appears sort of after that first dune. So if I reduce the heat haze intensity back down to a more reasonable amount, it's a much more subtle and believable effect, especially if I sort of look in the distance here. It almost looks like that first long dune is completely stable and only the dunes behind it are um, modulating. And of course we can play around with the parameters some more. So if you wanted to try that high frequency effect, see if that looks better. Let's put that up to three. Now you can see there's more ripples or more frequent ripples in the background. If you prefer that effect, that's fine, but we have, we have much more control. So um, I hope you found it useful adding these two extra features to your heat haze. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next one. See you then. Bye for now.